You can use background shading and soft edges to give the feeling that the figure is in an environment with depth. I'm going to walk you through the stages of this 40-minute drawing done from life here in my studio at School of Realist Art. I have my usual set of materials, gray-toned paper, General's charcoal pencils in medium, hard, and white, a kneaded eraser, and a fluffy makeup brush. First of all, I want you to notice how many times in this drawing I make proportion changes. If you look at the initial block in compared to my final outline, you're going to see how much adjusting I did. You're also going to notice that I make the arm on our right side smaller. So look for that. I make it actually quite a bit smaller. And I say this so that you will give yourself permission to make changes. It's completely normal to make changes as you go along. Don't beat yourself up when you have to change your original marks. Just make the changes and keep looking and keep drawing. By the way, if you want some real-time tutorials, practice videos, and piles of downloadable photo references, head over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash school of realist art. I've got all kinds of figure drawing references and help there for you, and I even take requests for future tutorials. So definitely when I started my shading here, I was focused on the form. And I mean that I was focused on the shading on the figure to show that the figure has some roundness. But eventually I decided to start shading the background and treating this more kind of like a painting. So the question is, why did I do that? When I often just leave the outlines and I don't do any kind of a background, why did I decide to do that background here? The answer is that I really wanted to bring some more attention to that hip, that line on the top of the hip where the hip is light. So in order to bring more attention there and kind of push that light side of the hip forward, I decided to do some shading in the background to create more contrast there. That also gave me an opportunity to kind of push the shoulders and the upper half of the body away from us since she's leaning away from us and create that contrast at that hip, both to bring attention there to that light side and also to create the sense that it's closer to us than the rest of her body. Now you're gonna notice that I'm using a makeup brush several times during this drawing. I'm using a makeup brush because art brushes like this that are really big and soft and fluffy tend to be incredibly expensive. You can find a cheap makeup brush. It's gonna need to be some kind of a powder brush or a blush brush, I don't know. Just look for the biggest, fluffiest one and you should be able to find it for just a couple of dollars. It works really nicely to soften your marks and to help fill in the paper a little bit. So you're gonna notice that I'm using that to help push that feeling of depth and distance because things that are out of focus feel further away than things that are in focus. After I get some of the background shading going, I decided that I wanted to make some of the outlines heavier. This was for emphasis for where I want the eye to go, wherever I want there to be more interest in the drawing, I make that outline heavier, and wherever I want there to feel like there's some weight. So I put heavier lines on the top part of the hip because that's a big focal point for me in this drawing, and I put lines where the model's weight would be in contact with the surface where she's laying. Then I started adding more white onto that hip, and that's to bring that out. I'm trying to make the hip seem closer to us, so giving it some more light compared to the upper body helps it feel like it's coming forward in space toward us. It is also adding to that sense that that is where the interest is. So conversely, I start making the upper body darker since I'm trying to push it away from us. It's kind of like you can think about using the black charcoal as making things further away and the white charcoal as making things closer. 
So you can think about that both on the form of the body, wherever that roundness is coming towards you, it can get lighter. Wherever it's going away, it can get darker. And you can think about that the areas of the entire space that are further away are a little bit darker and areas in the space that are closer to us overall are lighter and have more contrast. For this last pass with the fluffy brush, I'm not actually hitting everything in the drawing. I'm choosing to use the fluffy brush in order to blend the background, the upper body, since I want the upper body to seem to go away from us, and because I want the edges of the shadows on the head and the shoulders to almost kind of disappear, right? I want sharp edges closer to us and with interest, and then I want lost edges where things are receding into space and into that darkness. So I'm using the fluffy brush to soften those edges and merge together texture in areas that I want to feel far away. And then I am avoiding using the fluffy brush in these last marks and in these last layers on the hip and anything that I want to come forward. So remember with your edges, you want sharp edges, where you want there to be interest, where you want the eye to go, or where you want to feel closer, and you want blended soft edges or lost edges, where you want things to seem further away, and where you want things to feel like it's rolling away, or where you don't want the viewer to spend as much time. A lot of times we think that we need sharp edges everywhere, but that actually makes things less realistic. So consider that when you're trying to create a drawing that is more atmospheric, that is drawing the eye to different places within the composition, and that is really showing the depth of an entire space. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you would like more tutorials, head on over to my Patreon patreon.com slash school of real estate. Thanks a lot. And I will see you next time.